Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting? That as things are starting to go scarce because of the food supply, the food chain thing, isn't it interesting too that while our food supply here in America might will be eventually dwindling and um, you know you rob people of sustenance and people not knowing how to forge for themselves things are going to become quite um, <laughs> quite challenging in America to say the least the Lord had me to do a couple of videos a while ago warning about the um, the coming food famine here and th those links will be in the description box also very quickly brother thank you for looking out for me and putting in the description box a video that I forgot to link in the description box uh, thank you <laughs> but um, with all this stuff that's coming uh, with the, f the famine coming and um, the inflation on things it it's just outrageous it's just outrageous gasoline uh, here in Illinois, still, Illinois, it's still, um, depending on where you are, it's still roughly at least $4.80 to $5 a gallon. Diesel fuel is at least $6 a gallon here in Illinois. And that's significant because what do the, uh, the big rigs run off of? Diesel. Okay. What do most of the farm equipment run off of? Diesel. But see... The Jesuits have it concocted so that they can uh, create food for us in their laboratories, you know, their genetically modified organisms, and give us poison and toxic food that will kill us, and that have been killing us for many, many years. But it's interesting, it's very interesting, that with famine on the horizon, with uh, things just falling, falling, and falling, and a recession at the very least, the, uh, the Great Depression Part Two coming upon us. Isn't it interesting that the Jesuit controlled media is still telling you to spend, 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 <laughs> obey, consume, and conform? <laughs> Just like the movie They Live. I, I, I don't recommend Hollywood movies, I, I really don't. But if you have ever seen that John Carpenter movie, They Live, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, that's what's going on. Keep us Americans fat and happy. Take away our freedoms. Give us entertainment. And my country will love the Jesuits for it. But I, I find that so interesting where people are so poor right now and have no money and we're broke, yet they can spend all this kind of money on like cars and houses. Life insurance, health insurance, health insurance and life insurance. Hmm. Now granted, if you have someone in your family who actually needs surgery, that's, that's something that yeah, unfortunately. It's like I'm not going to, you know, like with my wife, she had hip replacement replacement surgery. We can, you know, we can do that. She's got state insurance so she can get that new hip, okay? That's unfortunate. But, again, with as poor as people are becoming, apparently, with the... Uh, stock market, you know, going up and down, up and down, up and down, with the economy just that close to collapsing. The food chain thing is just a joke, deplorable, ready to collapse. And, you know, the government controls the food, control the population. Like I said, we talk about that in a couple of videos about the coming famine. They will be in the description box, okay? But with all this stuff, going on there is a wiser way to spend your resources there is a wiser way to seek things that are more profitable for you than uncertain riches that will make themselves wings and fly away what is that this video is a collaborated effort um, collaborated this morning actually 
uh, our best friend had a lot to do with um, bringing this to pass, and uh, an another dearly, 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 dearly beloved brother and friend um, from out west, uh, from out northwest, sent me a link for a video, and, uh, and, and hi, brother. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's like, dude, you don't know just with what you sent me how it ties in together. What are we talking about? Go to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. We're going to be reading these first five verses here in Isaiah chapter 55. And we're going to, we're going to have a little expository uh, going on here. Just a little, kind of on the lighter side. But, you know, with all this collapse coming, with um, starvation, with famine coming, but yet, in advertisements on TV, I mean, you listen to spend, 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 consume, conform, obey, question not. The predictive programming of that movie, They Live, by John Carpenter. Don't, 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 don't go watch it. But I mean, if you Wikipedia it, Wikipedia it, you know, um, get enough uh, information about it that you need. But yeah, the predictive programming of that movie. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. And while the Jesuits, the Jesuits, you know, which run our nation, want us to be dependent upon them, broke and needy, and spending the money that we have uh, on things that do not profit, we need to consider what does profit. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 on to verse 5. Follow me along. Word for word, verse by verse, in the scriptures that we are going to be looking at. Please follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Okay? Please follow me along. Isaiah 55, verses 1 on to verse 5, beginning at verse 1. Oh! Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Unfathomable for us today, isn't it? Everything has a price. Our salvation is a gift to us a gift given to us by grace through faith okay unto us what is the cost for us besides turning against the world and following the lord but see it cost it cost everything unto our lord jesus christ god our father it cost him greatly see that's the the price of the blood that purchased us being uh, we being his purchased possession as the blood is priceless. The blood is priceless. And that's in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, I believe that is. Okay? But, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money. You can't buy your salvation. There's nothing you can do to earn your salvation. It is a gift given to you by grace. Through our faith. Okay? It's His grace first. And our answer to His grace is our faith. Okay? But it comes from His grace, grace first. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. John chapter 7. I'm using an old friend today. Using an old friend today. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Living water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. 
Yes. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. How many of these people out there of the world right now today are putting their money in like uh, health insurance and life insurance and uh, spending money on things that don't profit? That when the, when the economy collapses, a lot of the things that these people are purchasing are going to be bunk. And what is it going to do you? If you're going to spend your money on anything nowadays, you need to stock up on food. Praise, praise the Lord that um, we had been given that gift and able to stock up on food. We, we are prepared. Praise the Lord. But there are so many out there who are not. So many who are not. And you're being programmed. Buy, 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 consume, obey, consume, conform. Yeah. Yeah. And what does our Lord say? If any man thirsts, let him come on to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Ho! Oh! Everyone that thirsteth. Are, are you sick of this yet? Hmm? Are you fed up with it yet? Hmm? Do you not see the vanity? The uselessness? <laughs> The futility of everything that our American government, it doesn't matter in what nation you are, what your government is doing. Hmm? You not see the futility in it? Hmm? Aren't you sick of it? Aren't you sick of yourself? Hmm? Aren't you sick of your, aren't you sick of it? Aren't you sick of yourself yet? Doing what is evil while the government calls it good. Aren't you sick of it yet? <clears throat> yes. And it says here, Ho everyone, ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms, broken of your self righteousness, having godly sorrow, because it's your fault, you put him on the cross. Hey, I did too. Okay? And in fear of him, call upon his name and he save you. You come to him on his terms? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Life comes from the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And on coming on to him, he counsels you to do something. He gives you much counsel. But Revelation chapter 3, just one verse. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. I counsel thee. To buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness not, do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. And see, while Satan has uh, deceived so many of you, uh, you know, do what God, go against what God has said, and your eyes will be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Meaning, you shall be able to judge for yourself what is good, what is evil. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Only God truly knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. And he tells you right here in the scriptures. That's why you got to really beware for these heretics out there who say the, the word of God is not in the Bible. Or as it should be said, the word of God is not the scriptures. Because I, I agree, partly. Yeah, the NIV is not the Word of God. The ESV is not the Word of God. The non-King James Version is not the Word of God. Absolutely, those are Bibles. Scriptures? This right here, this is the Word of God. Yeah, this is the Word of God. And this is tried. Purified in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times. The Word of the Lord is pure. Okay? The word of the Lord is pure. And you go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 3. And let's refresh ourselves in Isaiah chapter 55 again. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. 
And he that hath no money, he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Well, that doesn't work today. Well, yeah, but man shall not live by ever, by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth, that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. By every word, the scriptures. And the scriptures will feed you. Uh, not literally, maybe, not literally, no. You're not going to eat the, actually physically eat the scriptures, no. But it will feed you spiritually. And if you hearken unto what the scriptures say, today is the third, right? Did you read the third proverb today? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And the God of the scriptures is not going to guide you away from the scriptures. He's going to guide you to himself through the scriptures, dear friend. Okay? Okay? You, you have to be aware of that. But you come to him on his terms. And he receive you. He receive you. Okay? And he save you. Okay? This is like, look at the scriptures. This is, this is our instruction manual for living. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 out of verse 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, new creatures in Christ Jesus, okay? There is a humongous difference between having merely a changed life and being a new creature. There, I mean, like we've talked about before, Alcoholics who have kicked the habit, they have a changed life. You can have a changed life, but are you a new creature? Okay? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word. And we checked this out this morning. Uh, Bibles, like the NIV, ESV, the New American Standard keeps it. So does the Amplified. Okay? But a lot of the bigger ones, um, when it comes to verse 2 in 1 Peter chapter 2, check it, check it out for yourself. You got an NIV? Huh? Follow me along in the NIV? Uh, no. Uh, milk of the Word is not in there, is it? You, have to, you like that NIV. You don't have the Word of God. You have man's Word. Okay? You have an ESV, you do not have the Word of God. You have man's Word. You got the nitwit living in the trash. Trash. Thank you, Vato. Um, you do not have God's Word. You have man's Word. Trying to pass off as if it is God's Word. It is the Word of God for the little G-God of this world. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that ye may grow thereby. If that's a that, that, that see that when you like I've told you, um, the, you come to an if like that, you take your little pen and here you go like this and you circle that F that if okay if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious tasted tasted yes oh everyone that thirsteth come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And if you've come to the Lord and have tasted the good mercy of the Lord, okay, you are to seek this uh, the desire to be filled with, uh, fed by the sincere milk of the Word, the authorized version of the Scriptures. Why? That ye may grow thereby. See, this proves you to you, people, that... You know, when the Lord saves you, he doesn't want you to just go by a spirit that you can't identify because you don't have a perfect standard. Okay, that's nonsense. That's of Satan himself. Okay? Beware of people who speak against the scriptures. But, and, and now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Brethren, Church of God, Church of the Living God. Do you really you? So few who are actually saved watch these videos. More those who are not saved watch these videos. Yeah. 
Yeah. But Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26 on to verse 27. And why are we to seek, seek the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby? Verses 26 and verse 27 in Ephesians chapter 5. That he might sanctify and cleanse it, it, with the washing of water by the word. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by, but by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Psalm 119, Beth. Okay. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. A building, right? No, no. Church are the people. The body of Christ, not a building. Okay? So, we are to seek the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. And right here, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Romans chapter, what is that? Uh, 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Why? That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. What the world is offering you today, what they're telling you today, those things are going to make themselves woo -woo -woo -woo, wings and fly away. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. But the things that our Lord is offering you, gold tried in the fire, boy, and a treasure that fadeth not away, that doesn't rust, where moth or thief cannot break in and steal it or corrupt it. See, what the world is offering you is vanity. Because we've got to remember in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 on to verse 32. Told you this was going to be a lighter um, expository video. You brethren, Church of the Living God, uh, you want to add to it with scripture verses like you do. Praise you. Uh, praise the Lord. Go ahead. Add to it. Add to it. This is to make these people think. And we ourselves too, brethren. Okay? And we ourselves too. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. What shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? All they can do is kill the body. They can't kill the soul. Oh, the world can take away all things from us. But they can't take our soul. They can't. Hmm. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, now, now see here, here. Okay, now think. The charismatics, the, even the Calvinists, and the Catholics, the, you know, the three C's, they equate this into tangible, worldly stuff. And, yes, there's, that has some aspect with it. But see, what is it saying here in the scripture? In verse 1 in Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, you can't buy salvation. Like Shimon tried to do. That one guy in Acts chapter 8. It's like he offered them money. So that give me the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that whoever I put my hands on. They may receive the Holy Ghost. Tried to buy the gift of God with money. And what did Peter say? Your money perish with thee. You think you could buy the gift of God with money. You can't. You can't. It's, without, it's priceless. And the blood of a Jew is the one who purchased that. The priceless blood of a Jew who washes away your sin. The blood, okay, cleanseth us from all sin. Okay? Okay? Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. See, 
The world is trying to offer you an insurance that can't insure you or assure you of everything, anything after death. Where are you going to go when you die? There is another depression coming upon this nation here in America. And you of all other nations know that about my disgusting Jesuit nation. You know that. You know that. And when all things in these Christians, these millionaire Christians, I'm a millionaire. God made me a multimillionaire. Yeah. What are you going to do when all of that Jesuit fiat currency goes bunk up on you? you go, oh, no. See, some of these Christians who have it made, <laughs> they only love God for what he gives them, not for who he is. Oh, be on to you. Oh, be on to you. Verse 2 in Isaiah chapter 55. Wherefore, dear friend, wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Proverbs 23, verse 23. One verse here is an example. Okay? Proverbs 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. On to man, he said. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And instruction. Where do we get our instruction? From going to a witch who's trying to tell you what uh, God is saying, but she's actually hearing from Satan. Yeah. Or go to a guy who says, you don't need the Bible or whatever. And Yeah. No, 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 no. Where do you get instruction? From the scriptures, the authorized version. Okay. Again, wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This, this the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, okay, this, this has proceeded out of the mouth of God. Okay, written, God used man hand, man's hand to write it. Yes, he did. Man is not the author of it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. God spoken. Okay? The spoken word is the written word. Okay? Okay? I know. I know. The way it is right now in the world, there ain't nothing for free. His salvation is a gift by grace through our faith. But it cost him dearly cost our Lord everything but unto us what does it cost us and see this is a price that some of you don't want to pay you're you're too quick to boot the door out of the way instead of going the pure way brokenness oh Brad you're talking yeah I am yeah I am talking to you about being broken of your self-righteousness man if you're not saved, you don't get it. You don't get it. Because you're still in your pride. Like we have talked at length. These people who, you know, it's the love of God. They're still in their pride. They're not broken. They're not broken. They're not broken. They're not broken. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Why, why are you wasting money on things that are not going to at least satisfy your body? Or you, you buy things so you can behold them with your eyes. Look at this. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. See, Satan is saying to you, I'll take care of you. 
I'll give you a little nest egg. That way rest at ease by the things that I will give you. But see, they make themselves wings. They fly away. They don't profit you eternally. And dear friend, were you blind? <laughs> Some of, most of you are. I hate to say it like that, but yeah. But how blind can you be to not see Satan at work? How blind do you, are, do you have to be to not see that judgment is upon our nation? But then again, like our Lord said, you know, there are those of you who claim to see, therefore your sin remaineth. But if you were blind, you would have no sin. Because he will open your eyes. Satan, yeah, has opened your eyes. And you think yourself a little God. You're not broken. But things are going to be coming upon you that are going to break you people. Oh yeah. Famine coming. And see what that brokenness, where are you going to do? What are you going to do? Where are you going to go to? Hmm? Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 11. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. Yes, the king himself is served by the field. You think the higher echelons of the Jesuit order, of the Illuminati, of the Masons and whatnot, all working for the Jesuit order, by the way. Uh, Catholicism is the head, okay, the golden head, okay, yeah. But uh, they're, you think they're eating the laboratory stuff produced uh, that's in the stores? No. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. Nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? Yes. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Mm. Well, I, I just bought me a good life insurance plan that's, or stuff like that, so when things go belly up, hey, at least I'll be covered. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and when they turn up the 5G or whatever they do with whatever kind of... Uh, you know, toxin, a uh, biological weapon disguised as a virus that they're going to let out there. Yeah, well, at least I got my health insurance, right? At least your house is insured. So uh, when the economy goes bankrupt, that insurance that you have on your house, yeah, what is that going to do you? What is it going to be backed by? Gold and silver! Gold and silver! Go for gold and silver! Y y yeah. Gold and silver, the price thereof, can be manipulated. And what's coming upon this earth is the mark of the beast, okay? That no man might be able to buy or sell, save they that had the mark of the beast or the number of his name, okay? Gold and silver is not going to profit. How, you gold and silver buffs, okay? The economy <clears throat> crashes. All hell breaks loose, okay? The Jesuit order through who? China. Uh, okay, because that's, you know this debt, who do we owe? Think about this, you know the national debt here in America? I've heard, I've heard people ask, well, we owe ourselves. No, you know who we owe? You know who my country owes this debt to? The Vatican! Yes, the Vatican! China doesn't work for the Vatican. Uh, China is a communist country. The Jesuits created communism. And they attributed it on to Marx and what was his name? Engels? Yeah. The Jesuits with the reduction with the the uh, reducciones in Paraguay, I believe it was. Yeah. They created communism. Okay? Communism, socialism. There's a difference between the two, but they have the same root. Going to the government. Hence the national debt. The national debt here in America, who do we owe? Who, who does America owe? America is the biggest indebted nation in the history of the world. Even more so in debt than the Roman Empire of old. And of course, the Roman Empire is alive today in Roman Catholicism. Okay? Who does America owe? The Vatican. 
and they're going to collect. They're going to collect. And all this stuff that you're setting up to defend yourself against that great time, if you ain't saved, if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, it all is going to mean nothing. It's vanity. It's dung, dear friend. Oh, but obey, consume, uh, and conform, right? Yeah. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Because, okay, you, you, you're working, you're a slave at your job, right? Right? And if you're not buying that which is uh, spending your money on things for, like, bread to feed you, both physically and spiritually... Okay? What happens? You buy it just to behold it with your eyes. What, 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 what good is that? How much stuff do you need? And, and it always seems at when people are at their lowest and they get a little coin in their pocket, what do they want to go do? They want to go buy their biggest and best things to, run the, you know, to, um, to go with that illusion that, well, I'm okay. I, you know, go, look at me. I got all this stuff. But what is it going to profit you in the end thereof? Huh? Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Verses 17 on to verse 19. You know, Solomon, who had everything that his heart could wish, everything, there was nothing that he withheld from his eyes. You want to talk about a guy who could buy people? Solomon was truly the richest man that ever lived. Truly. I mean, he had like thousands of pounds in actual physical wealth and gold and silver and precious stones and all that stuff. Not the fiat paper currency that many of us today who consider themselves, oh, I'm a multi-millionaire. Good for you, Christian. Good for you. You're going to be weeping and chomping on your nails when your bank your Jesuit-controlled bank goes belly up. Yeah. Yeah. And see, Solomon, with everything he had, verses 17 on to verse 19 in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, Therefore I hated life. Solomon, who could have, who could have anything, everything he wanted, he hated life? Yes. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. It's not going to follow you into the grave or into heaven, or definitely into hell. It's not. All your labor, your petty little kingdom that you're making for yourself, man, what is that going to profit you in the day of judgment? It's not. All your labor, all your hard work that you've done to make, to, you know, you build up your barns so you can, you know, so you can sit back and put your feet up and say, I got it made. You breathe the common air and just like everything on earth, you're going to die. That's the common denominator that we're not going to get away from. That's the common denominator that we're not going to get away from, dear friend. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored, and wherein I have shewed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. You don't know what's going to, what the person who you leave your labor to, what they're going to do with it. Look, look at what is called Christianity today. Look at what those who were before us left. And look what the Jesuits did to it. You want to call yourself a Christian. Okay. Okay, whatever. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor that which satisfieth, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. And what is good? Hmm? Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. 
verses 26 and 27. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Your little petty kingdom going to come crashing down soon. When? I don't know. But there's this channel, The Epic Economist, um, which I, you know, I, I found. A uh, brother sent me a couple links for it. Uh, check out some of his stuff. Very interesting. But this is a pipe dream. And it's all going to collapse. If you're not saved... All that stuff that you know, there, you know, Satan through his uh, church, Roman Catholicism, which is run by the Jesuit order, you know, obey, consume, conform. It's going to mean nothing. Verse 3 in Isaiah 55. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And of course, uh, as we uh, were putting this together uh, this morning, this, this, is a, this is an obvious reference here. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to verse 30. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Your labor that you're laboring to do, how does it profit you? Puts food on the table, amen. Amen. But is that what you're trusting in? Slave to your employment, slave to your job? Huh? Huh? Aren't you, aren't you weary? Huh? Aren't you? You are heavy laden, aren't you? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. You don't boot the door out of the way, and the door is Jesus Christ, by the way. Brilliant. But you don't boot the door out of the way, and decide, you know, walking around one day, it's like, doo -dee -doo -dee. Uh, okay, I'm saved because I just believe. No, no. We are to take his yoke upon, his, upon us. Do what he says. You come to him on his terms, not your own. That's what Christianity is doing to you. Ye shall be as God's Knowing good and evil. Uh, one second, I gotta write this down. One second. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I had to write that down because I don't want to forget. Even though, praise the Lord, I got brethren who watch after me on that when I say a, about a link and I don't put it in the description box. Thank you, brother. But Christianity, ye shall be as gods. It's what feel what makes you feel good. Okay. For example. These Christians, you know, will read your Bible and find a translation that suits you. Find a translation that suits you. How many of you have heard that? How many of you have been told that? You know, you should read a Bible, but you should read a Bible that, you know, that suits you, that, that speaks to you personally. The inference is that the authorized version doesn't. But so no, what, 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 you do, what you do? You have a smorgasbord. See, Satan has given you all the Bibles, such as. Oh, you got the message. You got the non-King James Version. You got the NIV, the NLT. You got the New Revised Standard Version, the, uh, the Holman Christian Standard, which became the Christian Standard Bible. 
uh, I already said ESV. Um, also, you got the Revised Standard Version, okay? Okay? NLT, okay? You have a smorgasbord. Oh, and don't forget the New American Standard, which became the um, literal standard Bible or whatever it is that MacArthur got his hands onto. Yeah. Yeah. So see? Or the message, of course. <laughs> yeah. Pick, pick a translation that speaks to you. What you prefer. And it leads you straight to hell. It pacifies you in your sin. Yeah. See, Christianity is telling you that you're the standard. Ye shall be as gods. When those of the church of the living God, those who are truly saved, born again, converted, um, our preference means nothing. This, the authorized version, this is God's word. This is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. This will give you life. Why will it give you life, Brad? Because this points to Christ. And Christ is the one who gives you life. Christ is the one who gives you life. But you learn of Christ. Christ speaks to you through the scriptures. And if you don't have the scriptures, you have a Bible. And yes, yes, the Bible is not the word of God. You're right. The scriptures, the scriptures is the word of God. And what are the scriptures? The authorized version. I remember his holiness the one day in, in something that, and that was the moment for me that, you know, besides the fact that he went after me because I, I, I'm against his Roman Catholic God, um, he did that video where he, and he made that mocking look. He did... These are the scriptures. That was for me, it's like, wow, dude, you're crazy. You're, he, he, he did. He's like, these are the scriptures. He made that kind of a face. It's like, these are the scriptures. <laughs> Look, you, you, you're not lost. We're going to hell if you want to call it the Bible, okay? But, <laughs> find me the word Bible within the text of Scripture. Words are important. Words have meaning. And God is not the author of confusion. And hath not the devil sown confusion through that? Hmm? Talk about a little rabbit trail there, huh, boy? Yeah? <laughs> Beg your pardon. Yeah. Aren't you sick of this? Aren't you sick of yourself? Aren't you sick? Of those Christians and Christianity. I, I, I know. I know that you are. I know that a lot of you are. Who have contacted me. I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand. But see. That hang up. That hang up. Which proves to be unto so many. The most difficult thing ever. And what is that? Coming to the Lord on his terms. Oh, 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 oh. You, you want to go another way. The way of the Lord is simple and easy. <laughs> I mean, it really is. You, you know, you just, uh, the hard part is getting over yourself. You know, that's the hard part. And unfortunately, that breaking of your self-righteousness that you cannot judge what is good and evil by yourself. Matthew 11, again, 28 under 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me. How, how, how do you learn of the Lord? 
through the scriptures. Okay, God is a spirit. And if you do not have the scriptures, and the scriptures will teach you how to discern what spirit it is that you are of, or that you may be hearing or listening to. Okay? That's why you got devils like that witch, Diana of the Ephesians over there, who come up and say, like, don't read the don't read the scriptures. Instead, come to me and I'll teach you how, which one is which. Just like John Boshoff did. Okay? You gotta watch out for these people. You gotta watch out for these people. And and yes, you you are lost people and you are atheists. And yes, we we've talked about this. Uh yes. Yeah, well, which one? Which Bible? None of them. None of them, yeah. Use the scriptures. Well, it says Holy Bible. Yeah, it does, but you ain't going to find it saying that in here. That's, uh, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> and see, that's the point. How many, I mean, one second. One second. Let me give you an illustration. Right? Holy Bible. Which one is? That this, this, this is uh, my copy of the ESV. Okay. Which one is? Yeah, it says that on the outside, but don't judge a book by its cover, man. What does it say on the inside? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. How are you going to learn of the Lord if you don't have what he truly said? This, the ESV, is not what the God, what our Lord Jesus Christ truly said. It isn't. This takes away. Oh, no, your authorized version, Brad, that adds, oh, yeah. Yeah, with the oldest and best manuscripts, right, that were never used and are in the custody of the, oh, Vatican, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hear a toilet flushing on your oldest and best argument. Yea, hath God said. What's that, what's that guy uh, who comes up when you search for the channel here? Wagner, David Wagner? Nothing but a Jesuit trained little sodomite looking, and I'm being polite, you know, trying to get people away from King James only. Uh, that, that, that little boy, he's just a devil. He's trained by Jesuits. All the cemetery schools, seminary schools. Well, what about Moody? Well, what about Moody? Huh? What about Moody? Or Dallas Theological Seminary? Yeah. Yeah. Who produced, I believe, Rick Warren? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're controlled by the Jesuits. Okay? People who come from the cemetery schools? Okay? Openly? No! No, it's not how it works. Even my enemies who know about the Jesuits because they work for them, uh, even they would have to be like, well, yeah, openly, it's you can't tell that uh, the cemetery schools are run by Jesuits. Uh, Jesuits are infiltrators. And those who work for the Jesuits are infiltrators. Your cemetery school that you learn from or that your degree that you paid $100,000 for, some of them, uh, you've been trained by Jesuits, yea, hath God said. You come out of cemetery school uh, being a harlot and uh, saying, well, it's whatever version speaks to you. All the cemetery schools go against what? The authorized version. You're reading your Hebrew and your Greek. doesn't mean anything. Okay, you don't need to go to the Hebrew or to the Greek. Those were stepping stones to arrive at this. And how do you learn of our Lord? How do you learn of him? Through the scriptures. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The hard part for so many of you is just that getting over yourself, brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord. Brokenness, godly sorrow, fear of the Lord. I know a lot of you were offended 
because I said that unless you have the fear of the Lord at salvation, you're not saved. I know a lot of you were offended. I know you were. I'm not sorry. Someone who is preaching this fictitious, satanic love of God, God loves you, God's not, that's not the true gospel. That's another Jesus, okay? They're lying to you. The love of God is Christ in him crucified. You, go, you don't go to him on his terms, you're not saved. And true salvation encompasses the fear of the Lord. And if there is no fear of the Lord there at your salvation, again, I'm going to offend you. You're not saved. You're not saved. If there was no fear, no fear of the Lord at your salvation, you're not saved. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am truly sorry. And, you know, a lot of the people that I've noticed who, you know, I came to the Lord with all because of all the love not dealing with their brokenness. Well, we're all sinners, but they don't get personal with it. Oh, without exception. Without exception. Personally. Those who come to the Lord because of the great love. Oh, well, the King James is the best version, but it's not perfect. Or, go ahead. Let them use other translations, please. Don't be so narrow-minded to use just the authorized. I've heard these before. I've heard these before. Those who come to the Lord because of all the love and no fear of God at salvation um, always turn out to be lukewarm, compromising, cowardly for the truth, for the truth, but deadly enemies, venomous toward the truth, especially those who want to tell you of it. So sad. So sad. Yes, verse 3 in Isaiah 55. Little rabbit there. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Verse 4. Behold, I have given him for witness to the people. A leader and a commander of the people. Joshua. Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. Verses 13 on to verse 15. One second, brethren. Okay, chap lips. <laughs> Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. Okay? Uh, Isaiah 55, you know, do one of these things. Okay? Behold, I have given him for witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him, and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship, did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? So, okay, we are told in the scriptures not to worship angels, okay? We're not supposed to worship angels. So, who is this, this individual? This individual who Joshua worshipped was a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Those of you who are students of Scripture, though, will look at this verse and say, What saith my lowercase l Lord unto his servant? Why is it lowercase l? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, okay, so that's not uppercase L. But then you're saying this is God who's, who's before Joshua? Yes. Prove it? Absolutely. Verse 15. And the captain of the Lord's 
host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Darrell, that only appears one other time in this type in the scripture. And that appears in Exodus chapter 3. Go there, please. And look who's telling who do what to do what. Oh, uh, let me see. That is in Exodus chapter 3. Uh, one second, let me find it. Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. And this is the Lord who appeared to Moses in the burning bush. I am, I am that I am, God, okay? Exodus chapter 3, verse 5. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. So it was made holy ground because of the Lord. So in Joshua chapter 5, verse 15, when the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Lose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy, and Joshua did so. That was only said one other time like that in the scripture, and that was when the Lord said that to Moses. So who this captain of the Lord's host was, was obviously God. Why is that a lowercase l in verse 14? I don't know. But you cannot deny verse 15 with comparing Scripture with Scripture. So this captain of the Lord's host, the Lord, okay? Verse 4 again in Isaiah 55, Behold, I have given him for witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Okay? And of course... Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. There's only one way, friend. The true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, whom I preach unto you, whom I am telling you about. Okay? The Jesus that people like, Bible is Mark of Beast. And uh, all the rest of these uh, Bible flock box, that wicked guy, uh, Mark the Messenger. <laughs> there are so many Christians out there that are giving you another Jesus. They're bolstering up, they're building up for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? They're offering you another Jesus, another gospel. Okay? But, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, capital W, Counselor, capital C, the Mighty God, of course, capital G, the Everlasting, capital F, Father, Jesus is the Father, the Prince, capital P, of peace, capital P. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts, hosts will perform this. This is, of course, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning from Jerusalem in the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years. Okay? He is, he is the king. Okay? And of course, Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. Probably one of the greatest proof texts that you can go to about this. Okay? Amos chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 15. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. In Israel today, they're not following their king. <laughs> Number one, Jesus Christ is not on the earth physically, but Jewry still to this day wants nothing to do with Jesus Christ, the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old when David reigned king over all Israel. 
and people whom uh, King David, written in the scriptures, a people whom I do not know will serve me. But the Lord knows all people. Yeah, he does. Not through a relationship, but he knows who you are. Absolutely. Okay? That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that sow a seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. During the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be a farming society, an agrarian, I believe it's called, society, agriculture, farming, none of this processed garbage or junk, okay? We're going to be farmers. Like I've said to you, brother, you're going to have your farm in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Again, more greatest proof text about what it's going to be like in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, son of David, referring on to his lineage, his kingship, is going to be ruling from Jerusalem for a thousand years, king over all the earth, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? And in his kingdom, it's going to be farming. None of this stuff. None, no processed food. No high fructose corn syrup, okay? Nothing like that. Nothing like that. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of the land which I have given them, Seth, the Lord thy God. Okay? And of course, Revelation, uh, let's refresh ourselves in verse 4 here. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Verses 11 on to verse 17. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And if you don't, let him alone. <coughs> and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. This is an uh, this right here, that verse, and my reward is with me. So many Christians want to disassociate, such as the redemption of the purchased possession, new life being a new creature, um, our liberty. Okay, they want to disassociate that from Christ Himself. Okay? Jesus Christ is the redemption of the purchased possession. The actual, hey, come up hither. Yes, but who is the one who is calling us up hither? It is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the blessed hope, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Jesus Christ, He is our life, He is our liberty. Okay? Yes, a liberty given to us by his charity. But liberty and charity are two different things. Beware of people who try to tell you they're the same thing. Those guys are devils working for Satan. Okay? Watch out for that. But Jesus Christ, and my reward is with me. Our Lord God, Jesus Christ, he is everything. He is our all. He is our hope. Okay? And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am, circle it, I am, Alpha, Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The beginning and the end. The first and the last. One verse reference in Isaiah here. Isaiah chapter 41. One verse reference. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Okay? Isaiah 41, just one verse, verse 4. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? 
I the Lord, the first and the last, and with the last, I am He. And unless ye believe that Jesus Christ is He, that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. What does that mean? Uh, you think that Jesus is one member of a satanic Catholic trinity, uh, you got some problems. Jesus is the Father. We already looked at the evidence of that already. Okay? But I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, who return to their own vomit, by the way, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, sorcerers, sorceresses, like Diana of the Ephesians over there, the Bible is Mark of Beast, okay? Whoremongers. Oh, a lot of these love them into the kingdom, gospel, uh, Christians, okay? Like young Cody. It's the love of God who uh, every Bible, you know, get a, get a Bible that speaks to you. Yeah. Yeah. And murderers and idolaters. Murderers. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. And idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Idolaters, like worshiping a certain time of year. You realize you guys love a lie? You guys love a lie. And the scripture says that you guys are without. Yes, you have the liberty to do so. But at the root of it, you, you, you love a lie. Yeah. Verse 16. I, Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. I want to show you something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And the spirit and the bride say, Come! Okay? Uh, Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, Come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye. Buy and eat, yea. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. And the spirit and the bride say, come. We're the bride of Christ, the church of the living God. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. <laughs> oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Drink freely. It costs God everything, but all it costs you is repenting of your self-righteousness. Repenting of how good you think you really are. That you're not as bad as so-and-so. That's what it costs you. And in light of eternity, dear friend, of what's coming upon us, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye. Buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Priceless. It's priceless. But I want to show you something, since I got this disgusting thing. Um, verse 16. I, Jesus, sent mine angel, on, mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Okay? In this disgusting thing, Isaiah chapter 14. What is that? This disgusting thing. Isaiah chapter 14. I want to show you something. It's worse than the NIV, just so you know. Isaiah chapter 15. 
Okay. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O day star? And Peter talks about when the day star arise in your hearts, making a reference unto Jesus Christ. Okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn? How are how you are cut down to the ground? Day star. Hmm. And the day star arise in your hearts. One second, let me find that. One second. Yes, that's Second Peter 1, verse 19. I want you to see the context. Second Peter chapter uh, 1. Oh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Oh, no, 2 Peter chapter 1. Excuse me, 2 Peter 1, verse 19. Yes. Uh, let me see, verse 16 on to verse 19. Or on to verse 20. See, the ESV here says in verse 12 in Isaiah chapter 14 that... Um, how are you fall how you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the dawn? How you are cut down to the ground. You want to hear what it, uh, what day star really is in scripture? Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 16 on to verse 19, on to verse 20. For we have not followed cun cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God, okay, this is talking about Jesus Christ. For he received from God, the Father, honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we, when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. The day star. That's Jesus Christ. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And Catholicism there teaches you that scripture is of private interpretation. Because Catholicism tells you that you need to go to them to understand the scriptures. And see, these cemeterians that come out of their cemetery schools, like that disgusting Dave Wagner guy, okay... Uh, you have to go to a Jesuit educated who has the credentials in order to tell you what God says. This right here, the ESV, just said, the day star, how, are, how you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. The ESV just said that Jesus fall, has fallen from heaven. And the word of God. Oh, but wait, wait, this little rabbit here with a little hot sauce, okay? Okay, here, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Okay, check this out. Okay. Okay. Check this out. This thing would stop a knife. <laughs> okay, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, uh, verse 12. In the authorized version, it is, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, Lucifer, son of the morning? Son of the morning. How art thou cut down, which didst weaken the nations? What about your NIV? And this is the 1984 version of the NIV. The 2011 is far worse. But check this out. <coughs> Verse 12 in the NIV. In Isaiah 14. How you have fallen from heaven. Morning star. Son of the dawn. 
Morning Star, were you following me along? Hmm? Were you following me along? Oh, they all say, they, all the Bibles say that. Uh, the, the Bibles, yeah, they, they come from those corrupt manuscripts that are held in the Vatican. This traces back to Syria. These ain't the same. This is a Bible. These are the scriptures. But, okay, verse 16 in Revelation chapter 22. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. And the NIV here just said, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. And the reference uh, that they give in the NIV references that. So the NIV boldly tells you that Jesus has fallen from heaven. Oh, and what about the nitwit living in the trash? How are you falling from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning? Yeah. Yeah, dear friend. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for that little rabbit there. But see, you are to learn of the Lord, and you are to seek the, uh, to seek the sincere milk of the Word and be washed in the water of the Word. Not an ESV. And definitely not an NKJV, NIV, or an NLT, or a New American Standard. Definitely not one of those. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 4 again. Behold, I have given him for witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Verse 5. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, for the Holy One of Israel, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. Come on, fingers, work with me. This set of scriptures is an old friend. This set of scriptures is an old friend. Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 under verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. For many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem, and to pray before the Lord. See, this is talking about how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? This is for this right here that's being mentioned is how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Kingdom of heaven which the Sermon on the Mount is written for, the kingdom of heaven, not doctrinally for today, okay? All right? Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And today, the Jew is the apple of God's eye, absolutely. But are people going to the Jews today because the God is with them? No. Future fulfillment within the kingdom of heaven. Because, because, we got to remember John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Verses 21 under verse 24. <laughs> Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation. Except the Jews. The Jews, that chosen line 
the Hebraic line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which stems from Shem. Okay? But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. You want to see something? You want to see something? John chapter 4 in the uh, ESV. John chapter 4 in the ESV. <laughs> uh, verse 24. Oh, this is in paragraph form. Isn't that nice? God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Take out that little letter A, huh? God is a spirit versus God is spirit. So, okay. God is a spirit. That tells you right there that you are to be, you will need to discern which one is which because there are many spirits out there. Okay? God is a spirit. And this one here says God is spirit. So, that spirit that comes upon you, that gives you the jerks and you blah, 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 or giving you revelation that's contrary to the word. God is spirit. So it's all God, right? No. 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 God is a spirit. And you are to uh, desire the sincere milk of the word and be fed and be washed in the uh, water of the word and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so because how are you going to discern what spirit it is you are hearing from or listening to? Unless you have a perfect standard. Unless you search the scriptures. And... And you just saw, and it's the same in the NIV, uh, you just saw here in the ESV that um, God is spirit. God is spirit, not a spirit. That's significant. That is very significant, dear friend. Okay? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 5 again. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto, unto thee because of the Lord thy God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee, the, the coming glorification of Israel in the time of the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 8 on to verse 12. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isle shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. The future glorification of Israel will come during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The salvation is of the Jews. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, Talking in context to Israel. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day, or, day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. And that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea. Those nations shall, utterly, shall be utterly wasted. And you read I believe in Zechariah. That if people don't come to give an offering during the Feast of Tabernacles unto the Lord during the Kingdom of Heaven, uh, they're not going to have rain. Otherwise, meaning that they're going to be starved. Also proving that during the Kingdom of Heaven, it's going to be a farming. Well, it's going to be farming. All farming. You see, dear friend... Right now, you're stockpiling on things like, for example, buy food that you can. Yes, you know, like we have still uh, almost 100 pounds of rice 
and canned goods galore. So when the famine hits, praise the Lord, we will be ready and also ready for some of our neighbors if they need it. You know, we have we have ourselves a couple of swords to defend ourselves. Yes, not literally the other types, but we, we have these things. And the Lord was gracious unto us to give these to us these things before uh, it was getting so bad. OK. But beside those things that are needful for the body, for food, because like it says here in verse two in Isaiah 55, wherefore do ye spend money uh, for that which is not bread? And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, referring to the scriptures. They got you in a trap, dear friend. And with what is coming upon this nation, it's going to be devastating. And when famine hits, and it's coming, that's going to turn people into beasts natural brute beasts though you'll have all this life insurance house insurance insurance on so and so you've bought all this stuff to make you feel better just to behold it with your eyes when our economy comes crashing down what is it going to avail you you need to as our lord said buy of him gold tried in the fire and let's refresh our memory on that revelation chapter 3 Verse 18, okay? Revelation 3, verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Let's continue in Isaiah chapter 55 now. <clears throat> Let's read on to verse 9. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near, and the word is nigh thee, even in thy heart. Let the wicked forsake his way, repent of your self righteousness, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Thoughts are sin. Thoughts, yes. Jesus says, Whosoever looketh upon a maid to lust after her in his heart hath already committed, uh, has sinned already, committed adultery already. Thoughts can be sin. Okay? And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy unto him, upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And right here, verses 8 and 9, these wicked charismatics take it out, take these out of context as a mean to manipulate God, as a means to get worldly wealth and gain like that. Professing gain is godliness from such turn away, okay? But in context, this is written on to the Jews. Verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord, huh? For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Amen. Because, you know, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that the God whom I serve doesn't think like I do. But see, how many of you, excuse me, beg your pardon, how many of you want a God of your own making? Thou thinkest, what does that say in, um, uh, uh, what is that, Psalm 50, right? Psalm 50. How many of you do this? Well, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Psalm 50. Come on, fingers, work with me. Yes, Psalm 50, verse 21. <laughs> These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, making a man, making God into your own image. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So a God who is not like us in our thoughts, but yet was manifest in the flesh and experienced everything we experienced. 
His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Such a God would, in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, saved, according to his purpose. God who is willing to devastate you, to break you, to bring to death things that are not, that the things that are may come forth. You need to consider these things, friend. The famine that is coming upon this nation, um, it's going to be devastating onto this nation. And just like Joseph did onto Pharaoh with in Egypt, at the guise of Pharaoh, the Jesuits are going to do onto Americans and other nations. Uh, apparently, I heard about it, they're doing this in Iraq. Uh, government rationing food already. Aren't you sick of this? Aren't you sick of yourself? How much longer do you think the Lord's going to put up with this before all hell breaks loose and before he brings down the anvil? How much, how much farther do you think we can go? Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Let's talk about this stuff, okay? Be aware, friend. The nest egg that you're building and all this worldly things that you have purchased to yourself, you think that's going to save you in the day when everything collapsed? It ain't going to mean nothing. It ain't going to mean nothing. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you repent of yourself and come to him with uh, godly sorrow and in fear of him, you call upon his name and may he save you. He make you a new creature. And lo I love him and serve him. In fear. Godly fear. Because how can you love someone like our Lord Jesus Christ unless you fear him? It's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope this video cuts you and to those of you of the church of the living God may this prick you things are going to get oh it's coming how ready, how ready are we brethren how ready are you you know the scriptures tell you you, you can know that you're going to go to heaven when you die Unlike the Catholic who doesn't know if they're going to go to heaven or purgatory when they die. They don't know. Consider these things and come. Let us reason together, you and I. Thank you to all of you who pray for us, who uh, help us. Thank you. We love you. Um, we pray for so many of you. Um, pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. Converse one with another. And pray for one another. Okay. I'm going to get this video uploaded. Shorter than normal video. Hmm. We love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we will see you in the next video.